How do you know when to let go of a team member? That is something that I see a lot with the women I work with. Um, not knowing when to hire a team and how to hire a team, but also hanging in too long, um, working with someone who is not producing the results that you like. And it has happened to me too. Um, that's why I want to create a video about this. Uh, my name is Tine Kerense from Powerful Business Academy. I help business women to grow from self-employed to become a business owner. Where you build a business according to the women's blueprint to business success. It's a system that I created which involves nine areas that women all need to work on if they want to scale and grow a business and become a successful business owner. Now, if you think I'm totally happy on my own, you're playing safe and you're playing small. And that's not because I want to diminish you. It's fine, totally fine. But I'm going to ask you a question. Are you creating and having the impact that you truly desire? Are you sure that you cannot make more impact? And if you answer, is that you're totally okay, then it's fine. If your answer is that you know you can make more impact, you are playing small. Sorry. Let's continue to the topic. How do you know when to stop with a team member? Well, first of all, you, you know when the quality of work is not what you had in mind. Then there may be two things. You may have asked the wrong person for the, for the task because maybe they are not qualified enough to do it. Uh, maybe you have not been specific enough about what you are expecting and maybe the person is just not good enough. Um, you know, I, I know in, in, a, in, a, in a designing and creative process such as logos or text or, or websites, um, for the way it works for me is that I have an idea how things will want, will have to look, but I'm not always 100% sure. During the process, um, because of sometimes misunderstandings, I get different ideas, I see different suggestions, and I can uh, change. Is your team member adaptable to that? Can your team member accept that it's a creative process for both of you, not just for them, but also for uh, the, the for the owner, um, who is also in a creative process. Can they be flexible around that? That's uh, another criteria. Are they flexible enough for you? If they're not flexible, if they cannot brainstorm, if they cannot come up with ideas, if they cannot always maneuver uh, with you, and of course that has its limits, then there might not be the right person for you. Um, the next thing is when the results are not what you expect. So this is very measurable for online marketing, for emails, for example, or for social media, open rates, comments, uh, click-through rates. Um, for sales, it's very measurable. You can see how many calls have there been and how many people uh, are in the pipeline and how many people are going to say yes or did say yes or paid. Uh, that that's that sort of a pipeline, a sales pipeline you can have. Uh, so so that's very measurable. If they cannot uh, meet up to eventually your standard, because usually the owner is the best at selling, but you can train your salespeople and you have to train them, yeah, because at some point they need to sort of become you during those calls. Um, if that's not improving, then you need to find someone else. For me, it's always extremely important, can they meet deadlines? Because if they cannot meet deadlines, it messes up the, 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 the creation process of everybody. Um, you know, if person A needs to do something on day one and person two needs to pick up and continue on that work on day two, and person one is late, 
person two will either have to work harder or will also be late for person three or when it goes back to person one. Um, so deadlines are extremely important for me. If they cannot meet deadlines, I'm going to talk about them. I'm going to help them structure their work. I'm going to help them create schedules, create uh, notifications in their calendar. If that still does not help and still does not work, I cannot work with them because it creates too much confusion, too much stress, too much, um, what's the name? Um, uh, in the moment uh, changes and that's 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 it, it's not a peaceful process so for me that's very important it's also when when they um, when they ask a lot of money and you are at a point that your budget uh, is gone you know when you hire someone they should do work for you that either makes you money or gives you time extra time to make more money. That's, that's the idea of team. Um, if either of them is not happening, if you don't get more time because you constantly need to be on top of them, um, or if they don't do well enough that they make money for you, uh, depending what their task is, when it's sales, they should make money for you. When they do online marketing, they should make money for you. Admin work, that's creating you space and time so that you can do more sales, yeah? So, so that's important. When sales is not increasing, um, it's not the right person because either you don't get enough time or they don't meet, uh, meet the, sales that, um, the, the, the sales goals that you, that you have. And at some point, you know, you might be okay with the work they deliver or you might even be satisfied but then you meet someone else because you talk to someone or whatever and you feel, wow, this person is so much better. And maybe they, they ask the same price. You know, when you work with independent contractors, it's very easy to let them go. Now, I usually don't do this like straight away. There's always warnings, there's conversations, there's talking about how to improve, there's me setting uh, parameters, there's me keeping them accountable. There's a lot of things I put in place myself first to help someone to grow. But if all of that doesn't work and I'm okay with the work, you know, it's okay. But then I meet someone else. Um, I'm going to talk to my people like, you know, I met this person. I'm now expecting more of you. Can you deliver that? Yes or no? And if they can't, well, I'm going to let them go. And then of course you have a contract. You have probably a month notice. That's then what you do. Okay. Now I already said before you let someone go, you need to talk to them. You can't just say we quit. Well, you can when you work with independent contractors, but that's not really the kind of boss you want to know, you want to be, is it? It's very important that you set your boundaries, that you're clear on what output you expect, on what day, on what time, on what quality, and what you don't expect. That's even more important. Because if you don't set boundaries, how are they going to know? So it's not going to change. And this is, and, and I know this is extremely difficult because, and, and I have been in that process lately for in many situations, setting firmer boundaries in my private life and also in my business. And wow, things have shifted. One of my team members decided to leave because I did not cope with certain behavior anymore. I was just adamant about it and she just couldn't handle it. Fine. Because I was stepping up in my leadership. If you're not satisfied, you have to sit on top of them. You have to check every, every step, every way. You cannot trust them until they start to deliver what you expect. And this is a big mistake many women make when they start hiring. They think, okay, I hire someone, they know what to do, I give them the free reign, they do what they do, and then, wow, the work is not, what, the work is not according to your standards. 
Well, that's no surprise because you have to train them and initially you have to be on top of them. Check every way. And then you might think, oh, well, I can better do it myself. Yes, you can. But that's not the reason why you hired someone. You hired someone because you didn't like doing it anymore or because you are not good, at, good enough at it or because you didn't, you know, you, you need more time to do other things. Yeah, so it does take time to train someone. Initially, it takes you more time, but eventually, after a couple of months, it should free up your time. Always check where are you to blame. Now, I'm going to read you a little list, okay? So I'm going to look up and down my paper. Um, do you spend enough time with them? Enough, or did you not allocate enough time for the task? Sometimes they need more time than you, especially in the beginning. Did you give clear instructions? Undisputable instructions. I often notice with online communication that it's difficult uh, for them to interpret what I intended. And even when I do this during calls, I have noticed they are not paying attention enough when we have an hour call or a half an hour call, they don't remember everything, even if I tell them to make notes. Uh, do you, you might not have proper SOPs, standard operational procedures, so they know um, exactly what is the next step, what is the next step, the next step, the next step, the next step. You might not have the right collaboration tools. Are you using, for example, Slack or another uh, project management system like Trello or, or uh, Asana or other tools? You need project management systems where you can check and monitor their progress and other people who collaborate together in one specific task. And do you even have team meetings? Because that's important, important for the bonds, but also for checking in. Where are they? What's next? Okay, so this were a lot of tips on how to know and, and if you've done all of the things I just said and they're still not living up according to your standards and to your needs and your expectations, it's time to find someone else. But this is just one little thing of building a business. It's an important thing, team and training them and knowing when to set boundaries and knowing when to let go of them. But it's just such a small thing in the whole scheme of scaling and growing your business. And that's why I created the Women's Blueprint for Business Success. It's nine areas and every area is as equally as important and they all have an effect on one another. They're all connected. If you do something here, it's going to make a difference there. Or there, or there, yeah, or even in more places. Um, I help business women to scale and grow, become a business owner. And if that's your goal, if you feel you can make a lot more impact than you do right now, why don't you reach out to me and schedule a quick 15 minute call? We have the link in the comments. You can you schedule it. It's not a sales call, it's just a get to know each other call. I can find out where you are and if I can even help you. And you can find out if, if, you, if I'm the same person you believe I am when you watch these videos or when you read my comments or texts or whatever. All right, so let's do that. And if not, next week there will be another video on another topic on how to scale and grow your business. Bye-bye.